A man needs many things in his life to make it bearable. A good woman, sons and daughters, comradeship, warmth, food, and shelter. But above all these things, he needs to be able to know that he is a man. And what is a man? He is someone who rises when life has knocked him down. He is someone who raises his fist to heaven when a storm has ruined his crop and then plants again and again. A man remains unbroken by the savage twists of fate. That man may never win, but when he sees himself reflected, he can be proud of what he sees. For lo, he may be in the scheme of things, peasant serf or dispossessed, but he is unconquerable. And what is death? An end to trouble, an end to strife and fear. I have fought in many battles. I have seen many men die, and women too. In the main, they died proud. That is from this book, Legend, by David Gemmel. And that was one of the many stirring pep talks given by Druss, the legend. Uh, one of the main characters in this book by David Gemmel. So my good booktube friend, James Fetcho, uh, talked me into reading this. He was shocked and surprised and dismayed that I had never read a David Gemmel book. So I said, okay, I'll read a David Gemmel book. And so I ordered the first book that David Gemmel wrote, which apparently is not the first book in this series. But it is the first book he wrote, so that's a good place to start for me. Because I'm not saying I'm going to read every book by David Gemmel, but I'm going to read every book by David Gemmel. And this is a good place to start. It was his first novel. And so I'm just going to go in publication order, just like I'm doing with Stephen King. Uh, I figure that'll work with this guy. So this, this fella, David Gemmel, wrote his first novel after or when he had been diagnosed, misdiagnosed, as it turns out, with cancer. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how you get misdiagnosed with cancer, but apparently, apparently this happened. I would have been rather upset if I was David Gimmel. So he wrote this book because he, he, one of his goals in life was to write a novel. And so he set about writing this book. This book is mainly a fantasy novel set in a fantasy world about a, a group of tribal barbarian types who are invading uh, this big empire. And they have to get past this gigantic fortress. So this fortress is being defended uh, by our empire, the Jirnai, the Jirnai Empire. Got some notes here so I don't forget the names. And uh, yeah, the fortress is the Dross Delnok Fortress. And they don't have enough people really to defend this fortress because there are just hordes and hordes and hordes of these uh, tribal nadir uh, which are uh, trying to move past this fortress into the empire in fact the first uh, the original title of this novel was against the hordes uh, which was published in 1984 uh, it was retitled a couple years later to legend uh, because, of course, the greatest character in this book is Drust the Legend, an old warrior. Uh, Drust the Legend. Old guy, gray beard. He is the most feared and legendary warrior of his, of his world. Uh, there are whole cycles of stories about this guy. Uh, he, anybody he's ever fought, he's put down, basically. Uh, and even as an old guy, he's about 60 years old, you go up against this guy, he's probably going to take you out. So Drust the Legend is one of the main characters. And he has been living alone up in the mountains. Uh, but an old friend uh, 
who is the Earl of Bronze, the old Earl of Bronze, who's at this fortress, has contacted him with a letter and said, man, we need you. With you here, you can inspire our troops to fight off this terrible horde. So he's like, oh, all right, I guess I'll come. But he's not the only main character. The other main character in this book uh, is a fellow called Regnac, or Rec for short. Now, he is an ex-soldier, kind of a roguish ex-soldier, who stopped soldiering because he had a problem with fear. Fear was starting to take over and he couldn't fight it off anymore. And so he sort of is kind of a hidden coward in a way. He's a tough guy and he could fight. In fact, when he does fight, sometimes he goes berserk. He's a berserker. But for some reason, fear was starting to kind of creep into him. And so he stopped soldiering and just became kind of a, a wandering rogue kind of guy. But then he meets this uh, warrior, this lady warrior, and her name is Vare. Vare, I think is how she, and she's the daughter of the Earl of Bronze, the guy who wrote the letter to Dress. And so she is on a mission too. She has to uh, get some warrior monks. There are warrior monks in this book and they're awesome, magic, magical warrior monks. Uh, she talks them into, well, they were already going to do it, but she comes to, to bring the warrior monks uh, back to, to uh, Dross del Nock, and she brings uh, Regnac or Rec also, because these two, while being initially at odds, fall in love pretty much instantly. So this book is really, really good. I really enjoyed this book, uh, David Gemmell's Legend. Excellent fantasy novel. It is... The action in this is fantastic, although it doesn't start with the action. It starts with, some, with the character development, with the characters. And it has kind of a slow start, and I'm like, hmm. But when the action picks up, man, it really goes. And the characters in this are really, really good. Um, and Wreck, at least, is a fairly complex character. I guess Druss is as well. Most of the characters in this book are really interesting. Uh, because they're not just, you know, two-dimensional characters at all. Uh, these are, there's some great character work in this book. Like that pep talk that, uh, uh, that uh, Druss gives, uh, that I just uh, read melodramatically. He knows it's all BS. But he gives that pep talk and he kind of feels bad about it later because he knows it'll win over the troops he needs to win over. And it does. It works. It's not the only pep talk he gives in this book. So most of this book is about uh, all of these warriors uh, getting together at the fortress and their preparations to fight. And it works really, really well. Uh, when the actual battle comes, you're really ready for it, and it does not disappoint. Uh, the writing is really, really good. It's not perfect. Uh, David Gemmel himself has said that, yeah, it's a first novel with a first novel's flaws, and that's true. But it's a really, really good first novel, uh, Legend. I was really happy with this book. And definitely, you know, as soon as I finished it, man, it's like, man, I gotta read another one of these. Uh, I gotta read more from this guy. The plot of this is basically pretty simple, you know. And it's, it's an interesting plot. Because it was, it was all about his own personal fight with cancer. With the fortress standing in for his body. And uh, the tribal Nadir standing in for the cancer. He didn't know if he would be able to win his own personal fight. It looked bad from his perspective. Just as it looks really bad uh, for the Janai Empire. And the people at this fortress. And so, if you know that going in reading this, if you know a little bit about the background, it makes it a really interesting read. You don't usually, for example, have characters in your fantasy novels who are dying of cancer. One is, and one does die of cancer in this book. And I had to think when he was writing this, 
what was going through his mind when he was writing this. Uh, cancer and disease are mentioned uh, more than a few times in this book because they must have been on David Gemmell's mind all the time. You know, because when he was writing this, like I said, he thought he had cancer. But I guess he didn't. That's, a, that's still weird to me. Man. Good thing David D Gemmell didn't have an axe when he went and saw that doctor who explained this to him. Would have been all bad. So it's, it's interesting how this battle mirrors his own personal battle. And maybe that's why he puts so much passion and energy into this book. Because even with its flaws, it's a fantastic book. It certainly makes you want to read more. Uh, probably the only real... I have a couple gripes against this book. Not many, but there are a couple. It's not perfect. Uh, I think that uh, Wreck and Vare fell in love really fast. I mean really fast. Like overnight. And I know that kind of thing can happen. But Rex seemed a little too... He didn't seem like the type who would do that. Uh, Vare was kind of a young woman, so maybe. But he was old. He was a little bit older than that. He's around 30 years old or close to it. And you get the feeling he'd been around. He just didn't seem the type that would just fall in love real, so quickly. But they do, and they get married, and he becomes the next Earl of Bronze. And so he, this guy who, who has had to deal with his fear suddenly becomes responsible for this whole fortress and has to become one of his chief defenders and has to fight on the walls when he knows he's probably going to die. It's interesting. The way it's all told is great. There are a couple things at the end that didn't really work for me. Uh, there's a lot of magic in this book. There's no magic system in this book. You have no idea how the magic works, and that's pretty much the way magic should be, usually. Unless you've got somebody like, you know, Sanderson writing it, who can get away with this sort of thing. Uh, but the magic in this is kind of like, you don't know how it works, it's kind of dark and scary. Again, the way magic should be. Uh, but there are a couple th kind of things at the end which is like, You read it and tell me what you think. Uh, but mostly this book is great. Uh, so he wrote a bunch more fantasy novels. I think he wrote around 30 in total. Um, he wrote a few more in this series. What's the official title of this series? Does this series have a real name? Uh, the Draenei Saga is what it's called. But he also wrote a bunch of other books. And I'm going to get to them all eventually. Eventually I will. I really like this guy. So yeah, David Gemmel's Legend. Fantastic book. Highest recommendation. Uh, great heroic fantasy. Sort of in the Robert E. Howard tradition. You can tell this guy read Robert E. Howard. He has a lot of that energy. But also a little bit more modern. Uh, characters that are a little bit more flawed. Druss is every bit as unconquerable, it seems like, as Conan. Uh, and you definitely want to read more uh, stories set in this world. Definitely want to read more stories written by David Gemmel. Fantastic stuff here. So yeah, there you go. Legend by David Gemmel. Fantastic book. I will catch you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I've got a uh, Book Trek uh, 2021 video. We're talking about... Star Trek The Next Generation, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And then on Saturday, I will have my 10 favorite horror books. That'll be fun. Okay, guys, thanks. I'll catch you next time.